my name is Andy and my hobby is astrophotography. Tonight I'm bringing a large Newtonian telescope which I'm going to use to hopefully image two galaxies. The mount which the telescope is riding on has to be aligned perfectly with the axis of rotation of the Earth. The telescope has two cameras on it, one of which is the main imaging camera and the other one is a guiding camera which locks onto a star and that star is then used to help the mount compensate for any inaccuracies in the movement of the mount and this keeps the stars locked in the same place in the field of view on the cameras. This enables very long exposure times so that the maximum amount of light can be gathered with the telescope. Astrophotography is very much a learning hobby and there's always a new challenge or a new aspect to learn, particularly when trying to image difficult objects. 200 PDS riding on the AZ EQ6, which is here. A dew heater on the guide scope here, and we also have a dew band underneath this felt here. The camera is hiding just under here. Just need to rearrange this. Uh, so it's the Altair 269C and it's the 120mm doing the guiding tonight. It is pretty much a full moon that we can see up there and hopefully the moon will go behind the house. So there's the house and still keep this in darkness. That's the plan anyway, so we'll see how we get on. One of the things with astrophotography that I've found is that it never fails to give you a challenge. And this evening, for some reason, my images wouldn't download from my main imaging camera. And I realized it was down to the USB power management. So I've, I've come into my imaging computer here and in the search bar, I put down edit power plan and it came up with this window here now, if you go into your settings, what you want to do is basically put everything on high power so that it never goes to sleep. So for this one here, I've put for the display, I never want the display to go off and I never want to put the computer to sleep. And then under the advanced power settings, under the USB setting here, I made sure that the USB selective suspend setting was disabled. So that's really important because what it does is it manages the USB signals that are going on. And because the imaging computer was only taking images about every three minutes, it was occasionally stopping those from downloading properly. This setting has been disabled now and images are now downloading, which is great. So you basically want to put your PC, your imaging PC or your imaging computer on the highest possible power settings that you can so that it it just eliminates any issues with power management and USB is going to sleep. It's been quite a chilly night tonight, a bit of frost on the scope and on the dew shield. And a little bit around this which keeps the light out of the filter drawer. Let's have a look inside. It looks like it's completely frost free and the dew heater on the secondary mirror is doing its job which is great. I came down at 3.30 in the morning and the scope parked because M51 was just about to go behind the trees which were up there so it seemed a good time to park it and um, the pre-programmed sequence parked the scope and it's been there quite happily for the last few hours so I'll turn it all off and then I can bring it in. two whole nights of imaging all the way through the night this week I did two galaxies one was M33 the Triangulum Galaxy and the other one was M51 the two galaxies colliding the Whirlpool Galaxy I'm still plagued 
with issues with stacking and I can't get my head around it. I originally with M33 I had this large ring that goes all the way around and it's exactly the same ring as I had when I was looking at the tap holes. That's got a large ring in exactly the same place all the way around which is really annoying. I mean it's not as bad as the one when I did Orion. That's exactly how it was with Orion. Um, and with M51 again exactly the same ring. Now I retook my flats and I retook my darks and I retook my dark flats. I actually drove myself slightly mad. I took about four sets of flats varying duration uh, using APT using Nina. Um, I did them cooled, I did them uncooled. Uh, I then stacked the images with and without the uh, calibration frames and I just could not get this ring to disappear at all. I just don't know what it is. It's actually driving me really mad. Um, the interesting thing is in the raw data it doesn't show it. So when you look at a raw file, straight from the camera, debayered in PixInsight, it looks okay. This is a raw file of M33. I'll just debayer it. And I'll now do a quick stretch. There you go. So there's M33. And I can't see the loop. I can obviously see vignetting going around the edges because it's not a calibrated frame. So I stacked a bunch of these and it didn't have it. So it's obviously something in the calibration frames, which is why I took all of the calibration frames again. But it still appeared. And all I can think of is that there's a weird thing going on between the telescope, the coma corrector, the filter and the camera combination. I don't know what it is. I did a quick search on the internet and I found one other person had this issue on Astrobin, but they didn't put a resolution to it. And I also went on Facebook and uh, spoke to some people there. And with their 200p scopes, mine's a PDS, um, other people were having this issue as well. One person even sold their scope. They couldn't um, get rid of it. So I'm just not sure what's causing this issue. I've been through the whole scope to eliminate any light leaks. I've taped up all of the joins. I just can't work it out. And I'm wondering if I actually need to now paint the edges of the mirrors and see if that makes any difference to things like reflections and also the focuser tube as well. I might possibly have to paint that. But what I want to do is speak to the supplier first and see if they've got anything that could help me with it or if they've got any ideas because at the moment the scope's kind of not very useful because I can't get the images to calibrate, um, which is really frustrating. I did, however, looking at this data here of M51, I did crop and it turned out all right. It wasn't too bad. The stars are not brilliant, but that's OK. The image is there. This was the processed image, which I'll put up at the end. Uh, I think it turned out okay. I really wanted this lovely star on the edge. You can just see the diffraction spike, but unfortunately I couldn't put that in. Um, but the actual galaxy itself is really nice. It's really nice. Um, I'm very pleased with that. It's not too bad at all. Stars are pretty hopeless though. So uh, yeah, but that as a galaxy image of M51 is not too bad at all. Um, I have not yet processed M33 because it actually spreads into this ring. So I'd have to do loads of background extraction in order to get rid of that ring. Um, I will process it. I just haven't had an opportunity to yet. So all in all, if you know what is causing this ring uh, I've been through all the light leaks. I've been, I've taped up all the joins. I'm now at the point where I'm going to paint the edges of the mirrors and take the whole thing apart. 
uh, and then paint it with matte black paint, either uh, blackboard paint or something, you know, one of these matte black permanent paints. But I need to speak to the supplier first, because if there is a fault with the optics, then obviously I, I don't know what we would do or how I would even go about trying to address that. So I just don't know. But let me know if you do have any ideas in the comments. It'd be very gratefully received. Thank you all of you for watching and for your support. We're heading towards 900 subscribers, which is very close to 1000. And that's nuts. Um, so massive thank you to you all for subscribing. And if you managed to get this far in the video, thank you for watching all the way through. I hope you've all got clear skies. Take care, everyone. And here's the image of M51 taken from my back garden.